Good morning again, everyone. Today, as we continue our study through Revelation, we're looking at chapter 22. We've already been there. I trust that you've had the chance to read it even already. But what I want to do is focus on two prayers that we find at the end of this final chapter of the book of Revelation. In verse 16, we read this. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who desires take the water of life without price. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with us all. Amen. So there's two prayers. Verse 17 and also verse 20. Verse 17, let the spirit and the bride say, come. And in verse 20, he who testifies to these things, that is Jesus says, surely I am coming soon. And then John says, amen, come Lord Jesus. So there's two prayers, both say come. If I can deal with verse 20 first. It really is just exactly as it seems. It's there for us to pray, come Lord Jesus, come. Gerald looked at this earlier in the week. But the question really still stands for us as well. Do you pray this? Do you really want him to come? Do you long for him to come even today? Would you pray it now or would you pray it once this devotion is finished with genuine hope and desire for him to come even as you pray? Or are there maybe certain things that you are waiting for or desire here on earth to happen hopefully first before he comes. It's a challenge actually. And if you would say, yes, I do want him to come, but not until, we have to consider what these not until things are. It could mean that we are holding on to some of the things of earth too tightly. But we have to pray that he comes. And if we know Jesus and long to be with him, then we should pray for him to come. It is a prayer, I think, which really shows that we desire him. You do desire Jesus, don't you? Because Jesus is there in heaven, as made clear throughout the book of Revelation, and Jesus is our hope and inheritance. In John 17, we read there that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. In heaven we will be with Jesus. He is our great reward. So to pray, come Lord Jesus, is to say, oh Lord, I just can't wait to be with you. I long for you. And I wonder if that is true for you today. You know, I think for any bride and groom, they long for the day of their wedding to come. And of course, when Jesus comes, that will be then the start of the wedding feast of the Lamb. You know, when we were getting married, Nikki had a countdown on. At any given day and time, she could tell you how long it was until our wedding day. She and I longed for it to come. If we could have made it happen any sooner, we would have. We want that day to come. And the church is the bride and Jesus is the bridegroom. We want that day to come. Do you truly long for it? Is it your prayer? Again, I think it's a prayer which says, Jesus, I long for you. But here's perhaps what we don't pick up on quite so easily. And it's the second prayer, which actually comes in verse 17. These two prayers are actually not prayer for the same thing. See, while well, verse 20 says for Jesus to come, the first prayer in verse 17 is not that. You could argue if it's a prayer, it is at least a cry of the heart, which then should become our prayer. But it's actually not praying for Jesus' return. Look again at verse 17. This prayer to come is actually addressed to all those who are thirsty. 
those who the verse says might come to receive the water of life. It is the spirit and the, and the bride praying, inviting, come. So the prayer of God's people is your prayer and my prayer. In light of the fact that Jesus is coming and in light of the fact that we are praying that he will come soon, it is an invitation that we must make to those who do not believe, come. That's what that is. It's a prayer to God that those who do not believe would come. And it's our invitation to those who do not believe to come. You may be familiar with the words at the end of that verse 17. They're coming from Isaiah chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. If you're a Christian, you've drunk this living water already. Water which means you never thirst. You have Jesus the bread of life, and in him we can be and are truly satisfied. I think it's an interesting thing for us to think about in regards to our evangelism. We want to say to people, and rightly so, come. We want to say, come and be saved from judgment. Because when Jesus returns, there will be judgment and there will be separation. We need this as part of our evangelism, an invitation to come and escape judgment and hell. But in Revelation, as we read of the wedding supper of the Lamb, we, the bride of Christ, the church, we are being prepared for that marriage feast. We're going to go to be with Christ. And is that something you look forward to? Is that something you want others to come to as well? Having tasted the bread of life, having drunk this living water, is that something you want for others too? Because Jesus, the bread of life, will be in heaven. And when we read in chapter 22 of Revelation, we read that the stream of living water flows through the new heavens and new earth, that temple. You know, again, when I think of weddings, whether my own or anyone else's, I think that we love to have our friends there. Our family, those close to us. We invite them to come to our wedding because we want them to witness and to share in our joy and celebration. Is this your attitude towards proclaiming the good news to people? Do you desire that people might come and join you in the marriage feast of the Lamb? Do you desire they can come and drink the living water and eat of the bread of life? To share what you already have? That's what this prayer of verse 17 is. An invitation to come. To come to share what you already have. The really important prayer that Christians must pray, that we pray for people to be saved. And so the two prayers are distinct and yet they depend on one another. Jesus will come back and answer to the prayers of his people. And if we truly desire his coming, because we truly desire him, then it is certain that we will want others to come and to experience and have what we already have and what is also promised to us. So let us come now then and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to pray that you would send the Lord Jesus to come again. He's come once and we pray that he would come again. And we pray that it would be soon. Father, forgive hearts and minds and lives which are clinging tightly to the things of this earth. It would stop us from praying that. Lord, maybe rightly there are people in our lives who we love dearly who do not know you. And so we long for their salvation before your coming. And so, Lord, that is why it links to this second prayer also, that we might pray and ask that you would save those that we love. That you would bring all those who you have chosen to be your children into your family now. That they would come to you, that they would join in and share with us the good things that we already have. So help us, our Father, we pray. Pray and come. And inviting others to come as well, may it be the real heart's cry for us today. And today also, Lord, we continue to pray in May 
Father, there are many ways in which times like these and in crisis sin may abound and we are aware of that and pray that it would not be so. Lord, we pray that this would be an opportunity for us to show the light of Jesus. Father, we pray that there would not be time of persecution against Christians or others as a result of this time, but that we might be used, that the church can be used. Even though we don't meet together, we still meet in different ways and that we can be salt and light in this world. So help us, we pray, as we pray again for your coming. In Jesus' name.